Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Vinny Gupta from UC East Bay. And uh, I have with me our presenter for today, Lander Beckert, who is a UC Easy counselor as well as uh, a ex English teacher and an essay coach. So uh, before we get started, a couple of housekeeping things. The first is that uh, the structured content for today that Lander will present would be about 30 minutes or so. We will then take uh, some questions. Uh, uh, then we'll talk a little bit about how do you engage with UCEC, and then Lander comes back and takes more questions. We should be done by 4 Pacific at the latest. Before we get started, uh, uh, one more thing. Uh, if you can please fill the feedback poll that's already on. Uh, secondly, in terms of your questions, please type those in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, not in the chat window. Uh, because that's the only way that Lander would be able to see them and manage those questions. Uh, please don't raise your hand. There's an option in, your, in the software to raise your hand. Unfortunately, unlike a classroom, it doesn't do anything here. So, <laughs> so with, the, with that, let me just spend, uh, Landry, if you can please proceed to the, yeah, thank you so much. That's awesome. I just wanted to give everyone a very quick overview of the sponsor of today's webinar, that's UCEC, as to who we are and why do we do these webinars. Again, my name is Vinny Gupta and I'm a co-founder as well as the CEO of UCEC. Our company name stands for University and College admissions made easy. It has nothing to do with UC or University of California. The story behind UC Easy is that me and my co-founder, we are both first generation immigrants who never went to high school or a four year college in the US. And through our own journey with our own children, we realized that students from first generation immigrant families are at a huge disadvantage while competing for college admissions. And uh, UC Easy was actually started for what we call leveling the playing field for college admissions. And what that means is twofold. The first is since we first generation immigrant parents did not go to high school here, we cannot help our kids. By and large, we cannot help them with the high school journey itself. And UCEZ tries to fill that gap through our counselors. The secondly is, how do children in public high schools, how do they compete with children from private high schools? The resource gap, especially pertaining to college admissions between a public high school and a private high school, most experts say it's somewhere like 50 to one is the resource disparity. So our goal is to level all that playing field for students from first generation immigrant families. Later in the webinar today, we'll talk about how do you engage with us? How do we help? But please keep in mind that we are a social business. What that means is that uh, while we are a business, we also have a mission of trying to provide college admissions help to every student from a first generation immigrant family. Along that line, we have an initiative, a charitable initiative or a giving back initiative called UC Easy Giving Back through which we provide college admissions guidance through counselors like Lander to 50 to 50 students every year, as long as they are first generation immigrant families and low income. For what we do, we've received extensive media coverage from national media, including USA Today, which is the paper with the largest circulation in the country, Washington Times, and San Jose Mercury News. To learn more about our company, you can go to uceazy.com. With that, let me turn this over to our presenter, Lander. She, as I said before, uh, A, she understands college admissions over 15 years, but for our topic for today, Lander was an English teacher, both at middle and high school level. And equally importantly, she is a creative writer. And as she will talk about in her presentation today, when you 
and I see that a lot of the attendees today are parents and students that are rising juniors or rising seniors. What Lander will talk about is the value of creative writing for essays. So Lander brings together these multitude of skills all packaged in one person. Uh, college admissions, essays, English teaching, as well as uh, creative writing. So with that, Lender, welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm going to give you guys some background about me just so um, we can get started with you knowing some things about me because I feel like that always helps the process. It's a little easier to get things done if you know who you're actually talking to. Um, I was a teacher for a decade. Um, it was awesome. Uh, about a year ago, I transitioned out of the classroom and um, I work for a company now that trains teachers and school districts in computer science. So um, that school districts in rural areas like Montana, which is very, very rural, um, have the opportunity that you guys are you guys are used to in bigger areas. So that's pretty awesome. But um, I'm thankful that UC Easy lets me work with students and keep things um, useful. Uh, I have taught, oh gosh, uh, thousands of kids um, in writing, and Vinny's right. I do um, focus heavily on creative writing, and I know that seems like I probably sit in the field and like write poems about flowers, which I'm not saying I haven't done, um, but when we talk about creative writing, we're more talking about um, the ability to craft your story so that people are interested in you, so that universities can see who you are as a person, and then um, and then take you on from there, which is delightful. Um, my mission with UC Easy is to help educate, um, organize your thoughts and your, your writing for you, um, and then empower you so that you feel like you can, you can handle this, which you absolutely can. Um, I also have a dog. Her name's Junebug. Uh, she's delightful. Um, I live in Montana, which is exactly what it seems like. Very big, very sparsely populated, lots of mountains. Um, we do have bears, you know, the general stuff. Um, so we're going to get started on that note. First things first, um, I don't want you guys to panic. Preparing for college is stressful. Um, I know there are a lot of juniors and seniors watching this right now, and you're probably feeling um, a little bit out of control or at least um, nervous. Uh, and I don't, I don't want that to be a thing that you're feeling. Rather than nerves, I'm, I'm hoping by the time we're done with this, um, you're looking at this as something really exciting. And this is one of the more exciting moments in your life because uh, it's the time where you get to choose what you want to do and where you want to be. For a lot of you, it'll be the first time that you're living away from your communities and your family, and you're going to start figuring out who you are as a person. And that is a really unique time in everyone's life. Uh, that being said, the planning process does seem scary. I totally get that. Um, and that's why UC Easy is here. Um, also why I'm here. Uh, to be helpful for you guys. So essays tend to start with um, personal statements, okay? And what is a personal statement? Um, and, and it seems, again, colleges use all of these crazy words so that, I don't know why they do it, honestly. A personal statement is honestly just you talking about the stuff that you've accomplished, um, your experiences. It's talking about you as a human, which is wonderful. Um, and many universities are using a feature where you have to answer a whole bunch of short response questions um, as well as a traditional essay. Again, none of this should be stressful because um, personal statements, again, is, is just you talking about you. And I will, will touch on that heavily as we go through this. Um, but you talking about yourself, it's awesome. Um, one, it's not like writing an essay on Hamlet, okay? You already get yourself which is awesome. Um, having taught quite a few essays on Hamlet, I understand that um, writing about Shakespeare is inherently more difficult than writing about, you know, the things that make you come alive. So when I'm telling you not to panic, I, I sincerely mean it. Um, is a personal statement different from an admissions essay? No, not really. Um, and, and I have in here, it's not the time to be a maverick. Just make sure you read the requirements. If the essay tells you that you have 300 words, um, you actually do have only 300 words. Um, so if you are a verbose writer and you're like, I'm going to nail this essay. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to write 3,000 words. That, 
it's like it's that's awesome and go you but the the school district won't or the school district heavens um the university system won't read past the word count so please when you're filling this stuff out make sure that you read the actual requirements um stick to the word count read the rules it's very important step one we're gonna go through the step by step so that it doesn't feel stressful um, and so that you guys feel like you're ready to seize the day when you get after it. Um, and I've talked about this twice already, but I'm hoping that me talking about it twice, um, it sticks in your brain. You're like, I should maybe really do this. Um, so step one is read the requirements. Um, this seems incredibly obvious, but it is shocking how many kids don't do it. Okay. Um, I have read, I don't even know how many countless essays where the students didn't follow the directions. And I was like, all right, well that essay doesn't, it doesn't do what it's supposed to. So reading the directions is, is honestly going to be the first step to this being successful for you. So just take a moment while you're doing it. Um, see what, what they're asking for. Okay. Are they asking for three pages? Are they asking for one page? Um, what should you be writing? Okay. Take the time to read this over. Um, when you're doing this, I want you to really think about the question that they're asking you. If they are asking you about your biggest challenge and you're like, man, my biggest challenge was this basketball game um, that I wasn't prepared for or it was this AP Calc class. Um, and then all of a sudden you're talking about, I don't know, someone you care about passing away like you got to stick with the topic so um, and this also follows with reading the requirements you got to keep your story um, and your ideas together step two think about yourself you guys are good at this you're lumped into that huge group of millennial mindsets lots of instagram you know i get it um but the upside of that is that you're already really good about thinking about yourself and 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 adversely like I know social media has got kind of a bad rap but social media is doing what essay writing should do it's crafting a story to put out there for other people to judge you on which is a little scary if you're thinking right now about your Instagram accounts but don't um, I, I more want you to think about your essays and how um, what you want the admissions counselors to know about you Okay, universities are all about accepting students that add to the climate of the school. If you are super talented at music and writing, um, MIT might not be the best place for you. And they will know that and you will know that or you should know that. If you're mechanically gifted um, and you are, are very solid in engineering mindset, you know, like maybe a liberal arts school that focuses on art isn't your jam. So when you're applying, I want you to think about um, what type of place you're looking for and then how to craft your story so that the universe is like, man, this person's awesome. They're going to fit in great. They're going to do successful things. Um, the best way to do this, and this is just, I mean, it's so simple sounding guys, but um, not doing it makes it significantly harder. And this is just how our human brains work. Um, so make a list and you can do this tonight. You can do this, you know, next week, next year, depending on how old you are. Um, list the experiences, your hobbies, books, athletics, people that helped make you, you. Okay, I have a very distinct memory of when I was a child. My dad was a college professor, go figure. Um, and he would, um, at every Friday, he would empty his, his briefcase out of all of the stuff that he needed to do his professor thing. And he would fill it full of books from the library. And bring it home and then we would spend all, all weekend reading all of these awesome stories and I think that that you know specific memory and those specific events really helped me develop my love for writing and my love for education and my love for helping and giving back to other people um, and every one of you has a story like that um, you know it, it shouldn't be the same as mine unless it is which is awesome but everyone has a story and the creative writing process is helping you get to that story Step three, picking your topic. Um, this part is a little tricky. Um, the easiest way I found to help my students when I was in the classroom, um, sort of this out is asking yourself the question, if everyone in the world had the chance to get to know me through one moment, what would it be? Like, what is the thing that happened in your world um, or a thing you experienced or something that you love? Um, 
what about what, what defines you? Like what makes you, you? And if you've never thought about this until now, do, do not panic. Okay. A lot of people don't think about this. I know grown adults who don't think about this on a daily basis or potentially ever, but this is good. A little introspection is how you, you figure this out. Um, and I realize for a lot of you, um, your brains are much more math and science oriented. So this whole creative writing process is making you feel a little bonkers. Um, don't. Okay. That's, I'm, that's why I'm here. Um, I understand that. Um, if you guys were doing a presentation on the chemical properties of two compounds, I, I, I would feel bonkers too. So um, just let me use my, my skill set to help this not be scary. Um, so when you're thinking about yourself, um, the golden rule is, of course, the writing is so much easier if you are writing about something you care about. Um, I'm sure all of you have experienced writing an essay in English class and it was on a book you didn't like or a poem you didn't get or, you know, whatever. And you're struggling to write this paper um, and you can't figure out why it's so hard. And then you can write like a 45 sentence text to your best friend about your day. You know, like things that you care about are easier to write about. And, and it's the exact same thing. Step four. A lot of people don't do this, but I really sincerely hope that you try it. Okay. Um, outlining your paper. And this is something I can help you with. If you're like, listen, lady, I've never done this before. That's fine. A lot of people haven't, which makes me nervous, but not that nervous because I can help you. Okay. So, um, outline your paper outlining. You don't have to do it the way they taught you in fourth grade or fifth grade or whatever, but basically make some blocks. What's going in your introduction? How are you introducing yourself? How are you answering the question? Um, body paragraph one, body paragraph two, depending on how much time you have, body paragraph three, four, and five, and then your conclusion. And after you make those boxes, you're just going to fill them in with the things you're going to talk about. Okay. Um, it's a lot easier to get where you're going if you have a roadmap. Uh, I mean, I know we don't use maps anymore. We use like Google, but um, still without Google, we'd just be driving around in circles. Like where is the grocery store? I don't even know anymore. So think about organizing yourself so that you can get where you want to in your paper. Um, without confusing yourself and or others and <laughs> not confusing others is kind of like the big kahuna of this because if the people reading your essays are confused about what you're talking about um, that's really going to cause some problems we don't want problems we want this to be awesome um, step 4.1 your introduction okay this is how you do this i'm going through this step by step because writing essays is hard especially if you're writing it about yourself um, and you've never done that before so if you're doing your introduction, um, briefly introduce yourself. Um, your thesis should be easy to understand and follow. Okay. Um, and I have an example one down here for you. Um, of all of the experiences that have most impacted my life, the adoption of my dog Junebug provided the opportunity to build a work ethic, a healthy lifestyle, and compassion. Okay. It's very clearly laid out if a college admissions counselor was reading this, they'd be like, oh, she's going to talk about her dog. That's weird, but also awesome because dogs are awesome. And it, it's lined out with, okay, I'm assuming the first paragraph is going to be about how her work ethic improved. Um, the second paragraph is going to be about how her lifestyle changed. And the third paragraph is going to be about her developing compassion. Um, and that gives them a roadmap too, so they can follow along with you and not worry about it. Um, how many of you guys, and I know you can't raise your hands, but just think about this, um, have ever been trying to get somewhere and your mom's driving or your best friend's driving or your dad's driving and you don't know where you're going um, and it just becomes more and more frustrating every time you drive past a sign that looks kind of familiar? I mean, a lot of you guys live in heavily populated areas. Um, I don't. I don't have two roads in my town, so if I get lost, like something serious has gone wrong. But um, like you're driving around in circles and you're feeling bonkers because you don't know exactly where you want to go, but you know that you want to get there. Um, and writing is exactly the same. Okay. And the person reading it wants to know not only how you're getting there, but what you're going to talk about. So just think of it as like a really detailed Google map of your life. Um, body paragraphs. This is how you do this. This is super fun. Um, follow this formula. It's just like a math formula, except it's writing. Um, if you are a strong writer, 
um, and you want to organize your paper differently, that is amazing. Please have someone like me or an English teacher read over your writing um, just to make sure that you're saying what you need to say. Okay, I do have seen students that are conceptually strong writers that get kind of lost um, trying new things. And trying new things is awesome. I love it. But I just want to make sure that the admissions counselor knows what you're trying. So here's the formula. Introduction sentence, statement about your main idea, um, anecdote or example supporting this, second statement about your main idea, a story or an example that supports it, and then transition to the next paragraph. Um, again, make sure you look to see if there are paragraph requirements. Three body paragraphs are the norm, but two can be as effective as four. You might only have space for one paragraph. Um, in your traditional essays, you, you tend to, it'll be typically a five body paragraph or paper organization. Um, <clears throat> if any of these steps are confusing, this is what I'm here for as a person. Um, and I will help you if you need it. If, if this doesn't make sense to you, just shoot me a, a question and I will help. Um, step three, conclusion paragraph. This is get, where we're getting down to the good stuff here. Um, conclusion paragraph is just you wrapping up your paper. It's obvious that this is your conclusion to everyone reading it because it's the last paragraph. These people read essays for a living. They get it. Um, so there's no real need to state in conclusion. Um, oftentimes, students will restate the thesis. Um, this is common practice. You can totally do it. However, if you can avoid it and instead explain the point of your paper without retyping your exact thesis, it's different than how other people write. Okay. Um, just all of you in your brains think about a, a time when a teacher told you that in the conclusion to restate your thesis. Like, I'm guessing a lot of you have had that conversation, which means so have a lot of other kids in America. So if you can just do this a little bit differently, it'll help you set yourself aside. Um, the way you can do this is give a few examples from your body paragraphs about how your experience, person, you know, et cetera, influence, supported, changed you, and then wrap it up with a statement about how these traits will make you a strong, whichever university you want to go to candidate. Um, oftentimes, students ask me if they have to write about something sad that's happened to them. And the answer, of course, is no. Some of you um, haven't had anything tragic happen to you. Some of you have had incredibly tragic things happen to you. Um, and neither of them require that you write about them. Um, the most important thing here is that you write about something you care about and write about experiences that you feel define you as a person, um, which is tricky. Crafting a story about yourself, I think is kind of fun, um, but also I've been talking about myself since pretty much I could talk. So um, this, is <laughs> like, this is kind of my bread and butter. If that's difficult for you, that's why I'm here. Uh, I, can, I can help you write a paper that doesn't seem like you're bragging. Um, and it's just telling people what your life is like. Um, this is just some tidbits, some things to think about. Um, using your outline, write your paper. Here are just a few things to consider. Use a 12-point font, Times New Roman. Don't use a weird font, guys. You're super into those, and they're all weird. Don't do it. It's just funky. Just be normal. Um, One-inch margins. Uh, just nitty gritties. If you can avoid contractions like won't, can't, shouldn't, and you spell those out instead, it makes you seem smarter. Um, and it's just a little more formal. And then exclamation points. Just if you can try to avoid those, that's awesome. Um, and then texting language is horrifying. Okay. <laughs> and you know this already. Just don't do it. Okay. You should be able to spell out the word you with all three letters. I have complete faith in you. Step six. This is my favorite part. Um, if you work with me, we will do this together, or I will read it out loud while I'm reviewing it at home. Um, your brain, and I don't know why it does this, I find this completely fascinating. When you're typing a paper, your brain reads in, it, in itself what it thinks you wrote rather than what you actually wrote. And I don't know why it does that. There are a lot of studies about it. Um, so in order to catch weird sentences, you have to read your paper out loud. Um, this is just a golden rule. If you're still in high school, middle school, whatever, if you do this, you're going to catch so much stuff that your teacher's just circling with a pen like, what is this? Um, read it out loud. Honestly, it, it, it makes such a, a huge difference. 
Um, and I mean, really guys, if we're thinking about this, a well proofread paper, um, that's going to be, and, and this, this hurts my English teacher soul a little bit, but the people I've spoken with at university level are, are becoming very concerned that students aren't quite sure how to proofread and aren't turning in papers that are spelled correctly or punctuated correctly or just doing like some syntactical tap dance. Um, please, please, please proofread your paper. Um, I'm not going to say that one typo is a make or break between you and Stanford or wherever it is you want to go, but um, I do feel that if your paper is structurally and grammatically perfect, which it can be, that's one of the things you can do in writing that's, that's, has a, a yes or no, um, that's going to really do some incredible things for you. Um, step seven, time estimates. Um, once you pick your idea, this process should take you about 10 days. Okay, the outline should take most of the time, um, followed by proofreading. Um, the reason it seems like a long time is I just want you to not wait until the last second to write your essays because writing essays quickly is how bad essays happen. And I know this because the only time I ever got anything less than an A on a paper was when I wrote it the night before and I was in college and I'm ashamed. So don't <laughs> write papers the night before. Nothing good happens in that world. Um, bad things happen. Um, and I want you to do good things. If you're working with me, a lot of this stuff is taken care of because I do most of the proofreading for you and help you outline it um, and help you with your creative writing story. So it kind of simplifies the whole thing. Um, if you're going to like be a ranger about it and do it on your own, great. Uh, but the process will take you a little, a little longer if you don't have someone going through it step by step with you. Things to remember. Um, the number one thing you need to remember um, is universities want to accept a student who will graduate and be successful. That is their number one priority, that you get in here and you do what you need to so you can graduate and wear the little, I graduated from this university, and then you do incredible things, and then they get to claim you, um, or they get to claim their, that their educational process got you there. So number one, it's, it's, not, it's not as stressful as it seems um, because universities want just you to be successful. Um, universities also care um, that you care about something, okay? They very much want you to give a hoot that you exist or that you care about things that um, matter to you. And I think that there are things that... Um, that we make it very stressful. Um, I just got a question here, and I think this is kind of an important question, and so I'm just going to cover it real quick. Do admissions officers read the whole essay, or they skim it? They spend about three minutes per essay on you guys. So um, a really well-written essay is kind of a big deal. Um, and because they care that you care about something, they want to make sure that you can, can push out there that you care quickly. And then also you are an investment for the university. And I want you to remember that like they are picking you because they think that you're going to go forth into the world and do incredible things, which you will, because it's, you know, if you guys didn't care about doing incredible things for the world, you wouldn't be here. And, and that's just how that works. So keep that in your mind. Um, I'm going to give it a couple seconds, let you guys think about questions here. Um, a couple questions I tend to see a lot are, um, you know, how do I write my paper without seeming like I'm bragging? Um, and this is not the time to be modest <laughs> because you're awesome. You've done something awesome. Um, and, and that's, that's important. Um, another thing that I get asked a lot is what if I haven't done anything I get asked that question a lot and it always kind of makes me laugh like you're a whole person <laughs> like, you have family and friends and you might you know be dedicated to a religion or a lifestyle or you know a hobby um, you've done you've done something you, you've done something so um, think about your questions guys I am very much here to help um, I'm going to stop talking for a minute because I've been going pretty much nonstop um, and let you guys get 
um, some time to breathe. Vinny's going to go over some things. Um, please pop some questions in there while we're going, um, and then I'll answer them when, when Vinny is done chit-chatting with all of you. All right. So, uh, Leonard, do you want to you, you want a little break? Obviously, that makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so for the audience, uh, from a housekeeping perspective, please type your questions in the Q and A box. Uh, so, while in addition to what Lander said, a couple of things I wanted to add from my own journey as a parent of two kids that went through the college admissions process, that uh, these essays do matter. Uh, even for UCs. So my son is a rising junior at uh, University of Chicago, which is a highly ranked private college. And he actually believes that uh, the primary reason why he got into that college and uh, not a few others in the same league is that he wrote an essay which came totally from the heart. Uh, to the extent that the prompt that he used uh, was a recommended prompt for University of Chicago the next year. Um, but uh, you should look at some of these prompts. Uh, go to University of Chicago site and you would see that uh, the point that Lander was trying to make that college essays, this is your opportunity to tell your unique story. And uh, some of these essay prompts at some of these high-end private colleges they will completely blow your mind because uh, uh, this is all kind of random stuff that, uh, that, that, that they're going to throw at you. So uh, take this essay seriously. And, and I think that the big opportunity for the rising seniors on this call today is whatever time you have left for the summer, please use that because you'll never have this much free mental space and creativity before your application season ends, especially when your school starts, lack of sleep and all that, everything will kick in. Awesome. Okay, Landa, do you wanna take a few questions? I would love to. Um, so I have one here It says, is it okay to write an essay about extracurricular activity um, or thesis or an award, which is already listed in the application um, elsewhere? You can write about literally anything, okay? Um, if you're talking about an award that you won um, as a challenge and then you want to talk about a time when you felt proud of yourself and it's the same award, that's cool. Nobody cares. Um, what's important, however, is that you don't copy and paste <laughs> because the essays are two different. So regardless, you're going to have to write two different essays. Um, so just keep that in mind, okay? Um, this is not time to be lazy. I love the copy and paste function, but this is not, this is not a great time to use it. Um, is it okay to talk about experiences prior to high school for one whole prompt? Totally. Um, it totally is. Uh, depending on what the experience is. Um, you know, I think a lot of universities want to, to get some idea of what you're going to be like as an adult. Um, so just keep that in mind. If, if what happened in middle school or previous to high school uh, was a really like life altering or a momentous occasion in your life, by all means, please, please talk about it. Um, if it's just something, you know, it's just the first thing you could think of, I would maybe try to dig a little bit deeper on that guy. Hey, um, hey Lander, yeah. mm -hmm. before, you, before you take the next question, I actually dug up some of the prompts from the University of Chicago. Awesome. I just wanted to read out a couple because I want the students uh, on this uh, webinar today to get a full understanding of what they are dealing with here. So guys, so here are some prompts uh, uh, from University of Chicago. So I'm just going to read this the best I can. So this one says, Due to a series of clerical errors, there is exactly one typo, an extra letter, a removed letter, or an altered letter in the name of every department at the University of Chicago. Oops, describe your new intended major. Why are you interested in it and what courses or, or areas of focus within it might you want to explore? Potential options include, pay attention to this, potential options include a muter, science, <laughs> bromance, languages, <laughs> and literature. Literature is spelled wrongly. Instead of fundamentals, it says fundamentals with a P as in Peter. 
issues and text, ant, as in the little animal, uh, little thing, ant history, a full list of unmodified majors ready for your editor's eye, et cetera, et cetera. So that just gives you an example of what you're dealing with. Another one, earth period, fire period, wind period, water period, heart explanation. Captain Planet supposes that the world is made up of these five elements. We are familiar with the previously noted set and with actual elements like hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, but select and explain another small group of things under five that you believe compose our world. So, uh, so hopefully you get an idea of what you're dealing with, uh, that this will require non-linear thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and non-linear thinking, guys, like I get it, it's a little bit, um, this is my dog also that's popping into the screen, that's nice. Um, that it's, it's a little tricky, but it's also, um, it's fun to write this way. And I realize that I'm nerdy and I spent my life writing, but trust me, once you get into it, it's pretty fun. Um, I'm going to answer a couple more questions here. Um, how important is it to use the buzzwords in the essay? What if the essay sounds too bland, simple, and straightforward? Um, I think you need to use the vocabulary that you are most comfortable with. Because if you're not using vocabulary you're comfortable with, it is blatantly obvious to anyone reading it. So don't worry about buzzwords. Worry about who you are as a person. Um, if you're reading it and it sounds bland, I mean, you can always pop over to UC Easy and grab one of the counselors and we can, you know, help you spice it up a little bit so it still sounds like you. Um, one of my favorite essays I ever received as a teacher a kid was worried that he, he was not writing excitingly enough. And so he just like the sorest every third word and it ended up reading like, a, you know, like a very strange, poorly executed song. It's just not, not good. So, um, could a well-written essay outweigh average grades? Um, the essay and your GPA are coming in about equal. Um, and I think it's important to understand that. I had a student, um, he's awesome. I worked with him last year, um, who had a pretty nasty injury during his high school years. Um, and that injury caused his GPA to drop. And so he used his essays to explain why his GPA was lower than it was, than it would have been. So in that case, um, I think the essay might be worth a little bit more. Like if something happened in your life where you're like, hey, listen, I used to be a straight A student and then this pretty traumatic thing happened um, and, and my GPA dropped. Like, I think that's very powerful because it shows perseverance and resiliency and all that other good stuff that people want to see. Um, so it depends. If your GPA is like a 2.2, the best written essay in the world isn't going to help you with that necessarily. Um, if your GPA is a, you know, a four point and everyone else is that's applying for that university is a four point and your essay is well written, I think that could really be helpful. Okay. Um, what if the essay is too short, like a 100-word essay for a 350-word limit? I would try not to do that. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to say that. I would try not to do that, if at all possible. Um, you, you're you're going to need the space that they give you because it's a pretty complicated process where they have discovered the amount of time it takes someone to craft the correct, or not the correct, but a thoughtful response for that. Um, and so, I mean, if it's 50 words short, awesome, but you definitely want to try to, to use the space they're given or that they gave you. Um, how can I make an achievement sound interesting? Um, by talking about how it changed you as a person, how it affected your community, how um, it was challenging to receive. Like achievement is inherently interesting because achievement suggests that you can do something better than someone else. That's interesting. Our whole world is built about people that are interesting in that way. So um, just just be confident, my friend. Like it's that's if you can do something better than other people, that's cool, and people want to know about it. Like I don't, like it's just awesome. Um, uh, Lander. Yeah. So before you take question, let me just quickly talk about UCEC, and then we'll oh, yeah. come back to you. Sure. And that way you can catch your breath as well. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So. Uh, in the beginning of the webinar, I talked about how I'm going to take just a few minutes uh, and talk about uh, that. How do you, how can you get help from UC Easy if you need? 
Now, what do we mean by help? We mean that if you wanted someone like Lander to work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and guide you either through just essays, that's the topic for today, but any other elements of the college application process, Lander has the skills to do so and the experience. And we have a team of 25 folks, and we're tremendously proud of them, uh, that are like Lander, that can help you with different aspects of college admissions. Uh, like I said, on, you can come to us only for essays or for everything. Now, our programs actually start from as early as eighth grade. If uh, you can start that early, that's highly recommended. And uh, at this point of time, we are supporting 500 students. So that's a big number. Uh, let me talk about how the pricing works, especially for essays. This information, by the way, is on our website, uceazy.com in a section called seniors packages. So as you can see here, for, for those of you that want to apply to the UCs, you need help there, then if you need the comprehensive help, including brainstorming about what to write, selection of prompts and review, then that's the price, $5.99. If you think you've already, all you wanted a review, then that's a lower price. So we have prices for the common app essay or the coalition app essay. And supplemental essays like University of Chicago, what I was talking about, there is very hard for us to provide a price until we know which colleges you're applying to because every college has different number of prompts. So here we typically say that speak with somebody like Lander for an hour, discuss your situation, and then we can give you a price. For getting started, just email us at info at ucez.com. You can also get contact information from our website. The second thing is that for those of you who are looking for comprehensive help, even so majority of you on the webinar today are rising seniors. There are a few juniors and sophomores and I see even a ninth grader incoming. So if you need comprehensive help for the entire aspect then uh, please call us and we can help you or understand what our, how our model works. But in every case, we suggest that just start, instead of making this too complicated, work with us, schedule maybe an hour meeting with Lander, and that way you'll understand how counseling works. If you have specific questions that are bothering you, you can have Lander answer those, and then we can share with you as to how do you work with us for a longer term basis. Here is an example for earlier grades as to how our program works. Now the 12th grade is not listed here, it's on our site, and it includes everything, including essays, college list, application review, recommendation letters, how to help with wait list, how to help with final college selection. We do everything that you will need until May 1st next year. That's the seniors that are applying. It's a very comprehensive program that we have put together. Couple more slides and I'll be done. There are a few other companies that may offer the kind of help we do. Why are we different? The first thing is that we are tremendously proud of the quality of our counselors like Lander, whom you have seen today up close and personal. The average experience is 15 years of these counselors. They have a master's degree at a minimum. Several have PhDs. The other thing is that you have a voice in choosing the counselor. And all these profiles are available on our website. Lastly, remember we talked about that UCEZ's mission is to help first generation immigrant families. We are not an elitist business, meaning that we're not only for people that are hugely wealthy. We want to try and help as many students as possible, which is why we have a flexible engagement model where you can pay, you can buy a certain number of hours or you can buy a package. We also have monthly payment plans for families that, that are unable to fork out a large amount of cash all at once. And as I said before, you can always start with just a baby step. And for the people on the webinar today, we have a special, meaning that if you want to order that first hour within the next two days or so, then your first hour would be only $100.
versus 150 to 175, that's our normal. You might also want to check out a few of our other free resources on uceasy.com backslash events. You can learn more about our other seminars and webinars. Now, webinars like today, they're actually recorded and stored on our website. So you can check out these webinars for different topics and please feel free to share with your friends. And then every on our Facebook page, which you might want to like and we'll appreciate that, there is an Ask Friday where every Friday, we, one of our counselors, like Lander, would post response to a commonly asked question. So with that, Lander, back to you. Awesome. Um, it looks like I have six questions here, so I'm going to get through these guys so that you can get back to your afternoons. Um, writing about an experience, should I focus on what I did, um, how I did something, or why I was motivated to do something? That is an awesome question. You can write about whatever you want. Um, when, if you look over the UC easy or the, not the UC easy, the UC prompts or the common app, the questions are very, very specific. Like, please share a time when you felt challenged. Um, and in that case you would write about why you did something. Um, but honestly, you're going to have to probably look at the essays and then, um, pick one of those. All of those are good. None of those are bad. So just keep that in mind. Um, any recommendation for daily week to practice for lower grade students? Um, as a former educator, I would say talk to your teachers um, and just say, hey, I'm struggling, and um, how, can, how can I not struggle? Um, which is not the most comfortable conversation, but as a teacher, I always really appreciated the students that, that were brave enough to come up and ask me for help. Um, and that also, you know, I mean, if you're looking larger into the future, That'll, that'll give you some fodder for essays if you said, hey, listen, like calculus kicked my butt or AP English is terrible for me. Um, and I still did it. And also I asked for help. Like those are, those are human adult skills. Like, they're, <laughs> like as you grow up, you don't have all the answers. Ugh, and I wish we did. That would be so cool. <laughs> but we don't. And we have to ask for help. And, and so um, showing that you're mature enough to figure out what your weaknesses are and, and work on them. Like it's good essay fodder. But just ask your teachers. Um, They'll help you, I promise. Um, next question is, should I write about quitting an activity in which I found little value um, and how the <laughs> leader of the activity offered to write me a letter of rec, but I turned it down because I found it worthwhile to focus my, focus my attention on other interests rather than getting a letter of recommendation? Um, you sure can. Um, it depends on the activity. Um, and also, I would get that letter of rec regardless, just as a, a side note, because the, the letter of rec can speak to your character as a person, um, as well as how you did in the activity and, and who you are as a person is, you know, the more letters of rec you have, the better. So just put that in your pocket, unless you don't want it, in which case, whatever. But um, you can totally write about that. You can write about how you want to focus on something different and, and how that was a struggle for you. Um, that's totally cool. I think that's a completely valid thing to write about. Um, I gave up on an activity that meant a lot to me. Does that mean I cannot write about it because I did not have the grit to persevere? I want to hug you, but that is, um, that's really hard, kiddo. Um, you, you can totally write about it. Um, sometimes grit is not persevering. Sometimes grit is saying that you've had enough. And it's just understanding how to write your story so that people understand that, um, that sometimes sometimes being tough is just not doing something anymore. Um, and as you get older, you'll see that more and more in your life. Um, it's not more fun um, than <laughs> anything else, but you can definitely write about it. You just need to figure out how to structure it so that um, so that they understand what what that meant to you. How much exposition would you say should be put into the essay? Um, depends on what you're talking about. Um, I think telling stories is one of the more effective ways in a college essay to be successful. Um, and also, I mean, you're writing about yourself and yourself is a story. So I'm going to say a large part of it's going to be exposition with some analysis and like, hey, here's a story. This is why it's answering the prompt. 
you know, like you got to keep the, the analytical thought high, but you can write about it whenever. Is it okay to use quotes from famous people? Yes, but if you use them as the first line of your essay, your college admissions essay person might roll their eyes at you because literally everybody does that. So totally use quotes from famous people. Um, using them as the introduction sentence is something that a lot of people do. Um, so, but if there's a quote that means something to you, awesome. Um, I think I used a Marie Curie quote in mine. Probably used it as the first sentence, which is why now I know that you should not do that. <laughs> but yeah, use it. Go for it. Um, can I write an essay about failures in my life and what I gained from them? Totally. You totally can. Um, failing is a thing that humans do. Every single human on the planet has failed um, lots. Pretty much all the time. Humans fail. So that's a human thing. Colleges want to read about that. Um, around how many different essays will one student write? Oh, heavens. Um, that depends, my friend, on how many universities you apply to um, and whether or not the Common App is usable there. Uh, if you're applying to the whole UC system, that makes it a little easier. Um, I think everyone will probably, everyone's going to write at least one, if not 10. So somewhere in that realm is pretty typical. Uh, a lot of universities have similar questions if you're not going through Common App or the UC system. Um, and those you can kind of tweak the essays to fit the needs without having to like rewrite every single one. So just keep that in mind. Uh, um, like, yeah. So before you take the next question, I just wanted mm -hmm. to also add something from my own experience as a parent. Uh, so one of the, and I think it touched upon this aspect early on about creative writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I wanted to add very carefully because I don't want people to think I'm judging anyone or stereotyping. One thing that we see, especially when we deal with students from first generation immigrant families, this is guys, again, this is not judging. This is just hard data that we are sharing is that the creative writing aspect is a challenge in a large percentage of students that we see. So the reason I'm bringing this up is that while you might think that you are okay in writing your essay in terms of brainstorming and writing, you might consider engaging, say, Lander just for, just as a creative writing coach, nothing to do with college essays per se, but it's like, they teach me creative writing because that skill will come in handy in all aspects of life. Uh, especially if you're a rising junior and you still have time uh, uh, to build that skill. So something to keep in mind. Uh, we actually did that for my son and uh, it came in really handy. Andrew, back to you. Awesome. Um, I have one question left and then... Um, how often do students write about failure? Is it a rare topic? Um, students write about failure about as much as they write about anything else, honestly. Um, and the topics are geared towards that. Um, cause school, see, and here, let me put my words together. Here's what universities very much want to know. Um, and this is why they ask about failure. They want to know that if you get to college and you don't have your folks near you, um, and your community and your, like the people you're used to, and if something happens like you get a bad grade on a test or you know one of your friendships doesn't work out or you don't get along with the professor they want to know that if you experience that type of failure that you are not going to drop out so they just need to know that you can handle things um, because you're an investment for them okay and then the last question I'm going to take here um, should I write about a success a success or a failure you should write about whatever was the most impactful in your life um, if doing something amazing really benefited you, um, and changed the way you look at the world, write about that. If, if a failure spurred the same type of human growth, then great. Also cool. Um, and then very last question, you guys are throwing them in here last minute. Go you. I love it. Um, is school's not started for me. How should I brainstorm for an essay? Um, I would... <laughs> All of these slides will be put up. I would go back through the list that I gave you, make a list of all of the things that are important to you, your hobbies, your people that are important to you, experiences, and then maybe start going from there. That's the best way that I could think to do that. Just um, rewatch this sucker. I, I lay it out step by step so that you can 
um, follow the process and not feel overwhelmed. Okay. All right, Lander, thank you so much for You're taking welcome. the time on a Sunday afternoon, whereas I understand you are a very outdoorish person and so is your dog. <laughs> so to keep you indoor on a Sunday afternoon takes a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, so thank you so much for taking the time to help out our students and, uh, and their parents. And uh, everyone uh, that's on this webinar, thank you so much for joining. To the rising seniors, guys, good luck to you for the remainder of the college journey. And uh, uh, I'm sure it'll all work out. Uh, let us know if you need help from us. But regardless, good luck to you. And uh, I tell every student that's going through this journey, it's stressful, hang in there. Above all, take some time to smell the roses. Mm -hmm. Go check out a movie with a friend or, or, or whatever that you enjoy doing. It'll help your creative juices. Uh, please like us on Facebook if you can, uh, and hope to see you at one of our other events in the future. Have a great rest of Sunday and have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.